So Piyush and Vivek, we have introduced this new segment in Let's Talk Business. It's called Rapid Questions. Uh, starting with you, uh, Vivek, I would ask you a few questions. Please quickly let me know your answers so it can be fun and we can know more about you. So how would you describe your entrepreneurial journey in four words? It's, it's a kind of uh, ups and downs, zigzag kind of journey. So I started in a corporate, then I first, my first company was in HR tech, then I started into another corporate, my second company was into supply chain and reverse logistics. Then I might, again, I went to Accenture as a corporate job and finally I settled into real estate. So it's a kind of zigzag. zigzag. Yeah. Okay. So one mantra that you follow, which applies for your personal life and career. So one thing that I have always uh, believed in is that when I manage my team or when I look at anyone, so I look at how likely is this person is going to take responsibilities and 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 take ownership. So for me, ownership is is the one thing that I personally believe in and. Whenever I hire, I look for that ownership thing uh, because people who demonstrate ownership, they become part of the company, they become part of the culture and they are the ones who are going to take the company forward. True. So that's what I believe in and that's, that's my mantra. Like. So in terms of career, if I have to make you choose between these two statements, do what you love or love what you're doing, which one would you choose? I would say I'm 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 kind of workaholic, so I I believe in both. Okay, sometimes uh, most of the times we love what we are doing, but at some point of time you have to do what you love, right? So, uh, for example, these SaaS initiatives, I I love building a SaaS business from the start. And from the very beginning, I had this thing in mind that we'll build a SaaS business. So it's like doing what you love. But all other businesses are building tech solutions for, for those is like love what you're doing. <laughs> okay, the so best advice that you have got from your mentor and you still follow that advice till now? I think I had different mentors over a period of time, but what I realized uh, my my biggest mentors are people like you, Tanu, Jibesh, Kanika, these guys, and the best advice is that you don't uh, when you are when you are running your business or when you are doing something, uh, first there is a there is always a cost of running that business, right? There is yeah. always a tuition fees that you have to you have to pay. So first few years is always a tuition fee where you learn and mm-hmm. unlearn things, and then you are going to expand that business. So I have learned the most from these guys only. So what is that advice specifically? So. I think the advice is that don't be too serious, Yeah. right? Mm. When you're going to experiment, you're going to fail and you're going to get up and then do that thing again. Uh, we have some businesses that we had to shut down. We had some geographies where we have to take back people, right? Mm. So it's always like fail, fail fast and learn fast and then build on those learnings and do that thing again. That's a great advice. And what's the worst advice you have received? Uh, I have to think about that, but I think when I was moving from my corporate career to to doing entrepreneurship, so I mean, we meet different kinds of people, and I had experience of like not doing too well in my earlier startups. So a lot of people came, and then yes, some people I won't mention, but they had this thing that this this won't work, but I had that belief that. Probably it's not the first time, second time, it's the third time that I would succeed. Mm. So those are the, I mean, you can call them advices, you can call them like criticisms. Uh, but I would I would believe that to the things I, if I have taken that advice and not, not moved on doing the entrepreneurship thing again, I wouldn't be here. True. And if you had to pick, you know, one option uh, among the a statement which I'm going to quote that one option which you would choose or you feel would be a big game changer in the coming times artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, fractional ownership, and blockchain. 
I would choose blockchain uh, and not cryptocurrency per se, mm. because I believe that blockchain has the potential, and blockchain and Web three are interrelated. This has the potential to disrupt the way the existing financial structures, existing financial organizations in the world are running. Although there is a big resistance from the central banks, from the governments, and all, but uh, I believe. How internet has built a revolution in terms of information exchange. I believe that how when internet came first, mm. it made the information democratic. Right, it, uh, the information exchange was totally free. Right, anyone sitting in a corner of the world can freely exchange information from anywhere. So I believe the financial transactions would ultimately go that way. They are going to become decentralized. Although it might take some time, but I think the biggest among these is for me is blockchain. That I feel uh, maybe not in the near term, but is going to revolutionize the way that we are working. So Vivek, I want to ask this one particular question from you, being a tech guy, and I'm sure you must be getting this uh, request. So one weird request that you have got from your client with regards to tech solutions you provide. वो बोलते हैं ना ये थोड़ा चेंज हो सकता है या इसको थोड़ा ऐड कर सकते हैं समथिंग लाइक दैट सो इट्स नॉट वन इट्स लाइक मेनी सो आई विल नॉट टॉक अबाउट लाइक माय अर्लियर क्लाइंट्स एंड ऑल बट टॉकिंग अबाउट स्क्वायर यार्ड सो वी हैव दिस टेक कॉल एवरी वीक विद अनोल व्हिच वी यूज कैन कैन डू इन जॉइंट्स एंड वी डिस्कस एंड ब्रेनस्टॉर्म अ न्यू आईडिया एंड एज़ सून एज़ दैट कॉल फिनिशेस टनो जस्ट लाइक is this already implemented mm-hmm. when is this going to happen so it's like we we work at like we we tend to work at speed of thought sometimes yeah um, we are always impatient while while we are discussing some idea like we want to bring it to the light as soon as possible but it takes some uh, at some point of time we are able to bring it earlier but most of the time it takes its own sweet time uh, but the amount of work That our tech team has done over the past few years is tremendous. Hats off to them. Um, we have close to like 25 different applications, eight different kinds of mobile apps mm-hmm. uh, that we have built. So Piyush, starting from you, these rapid questions. If you had to name two things that you dislike from the current Indian real estate market, what that would be? Two things which I dislike. Yeah. Ah. Uh, the stalled projects obviously a um, lot of customers lose a lot of their money in that yeah uh two uh, what i feel uh, again my personal opinion although most of the country would differ from that what i dislike is actually the plotted developments because i don't think as a country the size of the country and population we have and the kind of uh, immigration migration we are seeing in the cities we can actually accommodate people who would be building homes on plotted development we actually need to build our cities vertically we need to have massive huge roads and vertical cities so yeah these are the probably two things and according to you what keeps employees happy in your opinion i think the most important thing is sense of achievement and sense of ownership one i own um what i'm creating i own a piece of it to whatever i'm creating if it gives me a sense of achievement end of the day that yesterday i've achieved something i've created something that's the biggest motivators um everything else whether it is money or all they are secondary these are the most important things true so if you had to name one of your favorite leader who would that be ratan tata would be one of them learn uh, kind of uh, reading about him how he had gone through the kind of challenges he went through when he took control of tata to how he has managed himself through the years and the kind of respect uh, tata as a brand has got because of what he has done i think that's one personality i really look up to okay and best advice that you have got from your mentor uh i would say tons of them um what i am today is what i have learned from uh, my mentors over the years one most important piece i think which i learned from uh, one of my boss early on was always try to step into the other person's shoes 
So whenever you are in a situation, don't just think from your own angle. Get into the other person's shoes and think from that perspective. Life will become a lot more clearer. You'll be able to handle a lot more disputes or a lot more situations where there are um, gaps between what you want versus what you're getting. A lot of that discord will settle. So I think that's one most important piece of advice I think that has changed and shaped my life in a big way. That's a great advice. And any prop tech company that has fintech solutions will lead to success, true or false? I firmly believe uh, you don't need to have fintech added to make a prop tech work mm -hmm. or for that matter fintech angle added to any business to make that work as in if you are providing a service where there is a value, you are creating a value, you don't need to keep on further adding value by, by adding fintech. Unfortunately, that's what's happening in our country today is every startup, every service is eventually added by putting a loan around it in some form or shape. If there is a real value in what you are doing, people will take it irrespective of whether you are financing it or not. So that's what I believe in firmly. Yes. Uh, an addition of a fintech where there is a reasonable requirement of it, which is, let's say, a, a property. When you sell a property, a home loan is needed. Mm. Person don't buy a property because you are giving them a home loan. They take home loan because they bought a property. So as long as you are looking at your solutions from that perspective, the core solution has to have a reason for itself. If you just, your core solution is selling because you have added credit or fintech to it, then the moment that dries up, you'll be sitting on tons of NPAs and cancelled transactions and no business practically. Okay. And one advice that you would like to give young generation with regards to real estate investments? Start early. Uh, real estate um, adds, uh, in my uh, opinion, kind of brings two factors to play here. One is, um, I always say, it's not necessary you need to buy the home you live in. Yeah. Uh, buy a home, especially youngsters. What it would do is um, appreciation, definitely all those factors kick in, but it will bring a lot of fiscal discipline to a person. The kind of savings you are able to do, the kind of asset you are able to build uh, with investing in real estate early, you'll never be able to do with any other asset class because every other asset class gives you a flexibility, which um, is good in a way, but then it doesn't help in a long term to build that base. So initially, invest in a home, you'll have no money to spend anywhere else. You'll just keep on paying your EMIs, but yeah. you'll have a home for true, you. Very true. So which is a safer bet for a new home buyer in terms of investment? Ready to move in house, under construction house or a branded developer? Uh, definitely a branded developer is what is more important. Between a ready to move or a under construction, a lot depends on what your requirement is. Look, any day um, in India, staying on rent is actually cheaper than buying a home. Yeah. The amount of money you end up paying in EMIs, etc., you'll have more less money if you pay in rent. So your decision should not be based purely on the factor that I should buy a ready to move in because I'll stop paying rent. That should not be the criteria. The criteria has to be what fits better into what my long-term need is. Real estate is an illiquid asset class. You can't buy your home and three years later sell it and buy something else. So you are buying it for your next 10 years. If you are able to stretch your budget by going in under construction and take a slightly bigger house, you are better off because let's say it's, it's a double income uh, family, no kid. Uh, today you don't need probably the third room. You're okay with a two bedroom, but then you'll have kids. You'll probably need a third room. If moving from uh, ready to move in versus under construction helps you get to a three BHK instead of two BHK, go for it. It would be your best decision when you look at your life 10 years hence, because you know you had that extra room and third year, fourth year, you're not looking to change the house. Yeah. So decision has to be more from that perspective. And as long as you've got a strong branded, credible developer, the delivery risk is kind of taken taken care so it doesn't matter much